This should be a fun. Um, no, we won't pour these hot. We're just going to pour these in normal temp today. But very good question. So how would you know when it's, when it's done? Well, it, usually you're going to mix like your minimum of five and then switch containers and, you know, three to five more with your color. And that's always just right on the bottle how to mix your minimum instructions. And you want to start that out at a minimum of 70 degrees. And you're going to be really good every time like that. But... If we want to lose time, that's when we'd pour a little hotter, which we could pour hotter today if we wanted to. I just don't, I don't think we need to. You know, the only thing, if somebody wants to inspect that caulking along that back and just make sure nothing shrank back and no holes, somebody with good eyes. That's my only thing. I don't want to lose anything. Those, that's pretty good. Those screw holes are pretty good. Yeah, they are what they are. Yeah. All right. Yes. Say what? Oh. Thank you. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, yeah, that one I will. As long as I can get it back and not stuck. I don't. I usually spin them really fast in a trash can, and then I just keep letting epoxy build up on them. And pretty soon you have a big, thick and then paddle, and I just toss it after like 10 Silver. times. Silver. My bad. Um, due to the exothermic yeah. reaction, because we're mixing right now, um, the temperature will rise on the actual product we're mixing. You'll, this temp will get hotter and hotter. So, like, for example, I think. on these holes here, when you pour in the epoxy, are you gonna nope. The biggest thing is if we were pouring metallic only, all these holes would show. But since we're pouring a liquid base like this that's opaque, it's not going to show. So now, I think we're ready, guys. I'll go ahead here with the first one. And um, no, I like this. Yeah, you can toss that stick. We might have somebody help us manage some of that trash out to the porch. If you guys. Oh man, dang it. I did not realize this over here was. I left some debris up here. No, this is a dense enough particle board that we won't have to skim coat it. I'm not saying you, there's never a chance, time when you would want to. And, you know, this is a one day job we're trying to do in just a few hours for a customer for class. And it's kind of decorative. But if I was building this, I probably would have been built quite a bit differently. But you know what? If you're keeping your customer happy and you're doing what they want, that's my really my only goal. This is epoxy, guys. 
Countertop epoxy. Should be very, just to, hey Lori, thank you everybody for joining us on the live. Let us know where you're watching from, what you'd rather see. This is just a fun class where we're doing a countertop. It's actually one of our students came in and said they wanted to pour their countertop, so we just showed up and we're having fun doing it. So there we are. And I'm trying to just do a very dirty, random, natural, not organized pour here. Man, you guys are from everywhere. Tampa, Canada, Mexico, Florida. Ah! Almost lost my bucket. Guys, this is turning out just fine. Yeah. I like those two colors. Yeah. It does look good, right? Yeah. Barcelona. Barcelona. London. I miss you guys. You got to get back over there. There was a Scottish guy in my last class by London that I kept telling him he needed to learn to speak English and he was getting so mad. I like actually thought he might fight me after class. He was getting so angry about me saying he didn't speak English. Oh, I don't want to get you dirty, sorry. How long will a 165-foot countertop You know, it just totally depends on the look you're wanting. If you have a 165-foot countertop, it's not an issue at all. It just depends on kind of what you're wanting to have done in there. The square footage isn't really a big deal because you can mix larger batches. And, but now I'm going to try to keep my final pattern pretty linear in here. What are you doing? We are epoxy on a countertop, everybody. Hope you guys enjoy the show. It's kind of a little different than we normally do. We don't, don't usually build borders around it, but this is a customer that did it and it and they just want a really thick natural pour into it, so I think this will turn out just great. Is anything special other than maybe a drop cloth that you use when you're doing the dip over the edge method? Nope, I actually tape, I pull all my top drawers and I tape first a layer of frog tape after I clean everything um, with alcohol, and then I put tape and drape to the frog tape, like halfway down it, and then I sandwich another frog tape, and then before I pull that down, I do another row of tape and drape down lower, and I usually put that on either ram board or some kind of cardboard or cheap paper, because I want that plastic to have kind of that softness of the ram board so it doesn't tear if you step on it, because a lot of times on tile, like tape and drape just rips. So, and I'm really careful with my corners to work everything in. Um, this is way stronger than any primer. This this epoxy has such a better bond strength than any primer. A lot of primers are sounds great. I mean, you need them on metal with paint and stuff like that. But once you're working with real epoxies, your your bond strength is so much higher that primers are a joke. I don't want to overly mix this. That's my biggest goal right now is to not mix this too much. This counter was a um, crazy looking for Micah countertop that we kind of hacked this morning to do it a little differently than we normally do, but we still get to have the fun of pouring epoxy, so we thought we'd bring you guys here. Just trying to do a really natural, super simple pattern. Yeah, he picked colors, and we're just trying to do something really swirled and natural for him that kind of matched his colors. 
I hope it matches these colors. Zero fumes, zero odor whatsoever, and thank you guys for caring and asking. This is a very good product that does not have any odor. Cure time, something like this. Nice warm in here right now. You're maximum going to be in here for maybe, well, I don't know, 12 hours, and it'll be pretty darn hard to the touch. As long as you keep this temperature up, I'd say 12 hours is all you really need. This is Countertop Epoxy. Link's in the bio to buy any of these products, and we do have a sale on our workshops going on right now. I'm going to keep all my linear strokes, per se, going the same-ish way. The tape, I'll just remove it as soon as I'm done making a mess on this. I don't want to have a little too much product down here, and it's kind of scaring me, so I'm not sure. So you don't put anything on your walls to open? No, I'm going to wipe that and put alcohol and torch it, and they'll be cleaner than if I ever was to tape it and peel it. Yeah, I kind of like this mix a little more, a little overly mixed. Don't you guys like it mixed a little more? Mm -hmm. I kind of... Um, we're going to torch it, and it's going to cure out, and it's going to leave a really nice hard sheen on the surface, and that's all you really want to do, so... As long as you mix it accurately and correctly, it's going to make a big difference on how hard and scratch resistant it is. Um, um, I usually go a gallon for every 15 square feet. So I think that's 7 or 6.8 or 7 point something ounces per square foot, if I do my math correctly. 15 square feet per gallon. It's just off the top of my head, I'd say that's 6.8 or 7 something, so I'm probably way wrong. This is quite a bit heavier than you'd ever have to normally mix this. Where is that shimmer gold spray? The shimmer gold. You should have that. Yeah, there we are. On a bathtub? We have a different product for bathtubs, guys. Is the homeowner in here? Is one of these gentlemen the actual homeowner? Mm -hmm. Is one of these gentlemen the actual homeowner? I don't think so, right? Oh, I got you.
<laughs> Just want a little bit of shimmer in this, hoping. Say what? If you're not careful with alcohol, you'd want to want to, but I'll be pretty careful with it. Yeah, if I wasn't, yeah, if I wasn't sure of myself, I probably would. I'm I'm just pretty careful with alcohol too. I try to be like right now. See where it is. I don't know, what do y'all think? Is it all right? A little what? A little bit too simple than what I was expecting. Simpler than what you were thinking? Oh yeah. What were you, what were you hoping for? The mixing process, the way to get the shape. You thought it would be more complicated? Yeah, yeah just, yeah, pour it and go. Yeah, I think it looks really good. Um, nope, that's, I have not taught in California. We don't have a teaching venue there. That's good. Keep it that way. Why is that? 
What is that? <laughs> you want me to do classes in California? Let me be an asshole and say, what do you think you could ever do to make somebody want to come to a class of yours? And, I, and I'm not, I am actually being an asshole here, but to try to show you something. What, what because I see a lot of people trying to teach these classes, and they no, get all excited, and I, just to explain it, they think, oh, there's a lot of money in classes, right? But they don't want to go on 1,200 jobs and put up with 1,200 pieces of shit that they have to figure out and get kicked in the teeth and figure out how to fix something over and over and over and figure. And that is honestly the only reason why we fill classes up, I think, is I've spent years and years and years very involved on tons of jobs. So I have people in all the classes are like, hey, dude, I'm going to teach the next class. And I'm like, I would love you to teach it, and I'll help you teach the class, but I want you to teach actual solutions, not just have fun pouring epoxy around and everybody gets to leave having fun kind of watching something or, but there's no actual actionable intelligence that they can go bid a job, feel comfortable, make sure it warranties, make sure it doesn't fail. How do I deal with a few issues? Like that's, that's really the value. And if he learns that, he'd be huge. So. Well, that's I what I was getting to, because I want to dominate that area first. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, you can Good, and just so you know, just so you know, I've worked in California seven times this year. So, so I do, I do a lot of business in California, and we have we have a lot of dealers and people that work really well with us in California. I just haven't taught, and I've taught private classes. I haven't done a big one like this, but we've, we're actually publicly asking for a Los Angeles like teaching facility. So, if anyone has a facility in LA, it, we pay you well. If we can have your place. Well for somebody to, to do classes besides like you and somebody else that actually know the product. Right. Because people ask him, how do you know this product? Right. When did it start? How do you come up with this color? Yep. Well, how do you know how to make the color? Exactly. You know what, what to say because you don't know actually. Where can you put it in a UV? If you can, how? How does it bond? What if I'm bonding to metal? What if I'm bonding to concrete? Wood. Yep. Which that's what I'd want to do with somebody like him is instead of him trying to dominate LA, we could go work with him and help him actually teach a really valuable class yeah, where he's yeah. teaching things that most people don't really know happen unless you've been on 100 jobs. You just don't see a ton of things, but they'll put you out of business if you run across the wrong thing and don't know what to yeah. do. So, or do you get into big commercial thinking it's all success, but you never really never understood your numbers. So I really want people to understand their numbers so that they know if they're making a profit because we don't want to teach people to go work for free. Yeah. You know, you have kids to feed. So I don't know. What do you guys think? I think it turned out good. Good work, yeah, everybody. This is you guys working on this. I personally would recommend whoever is left on the house to stay here for like three hours and then peel all the tape. But I would wait like three hours and I'd look for any little drips, anything getting behind the trim and just wipe it up right now until it quits dripping. And then once you peel the tape, this should be a done job. I would torch it like, I'm gonna probably stay right now and just torch it one more time. And then I'm gonna spray heavy clear alcohol, just really heavy on there because I want anything, the little air bubbles that still come up to the surface. Yep, and that clear will really just wash over that, and okay. and anything so that the, the, uh, heavy mist over yeah, clear yeah. alcohol that cures all the air Yeah, and then anything that pops up kind of late, you know. And I don't do that all the time, but if I'm really concerned about it, like I am, kind of on this one. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, if you want to teach a class, come work with me and I'll help you. But we've got to give value to people. Maybe not. Come work with me and teach one. You speak Spanish, right? Come and be my interpreter in a class. Do you want to come interpret a class? I'll work with you like that if you really want to. Seriously. Yeah, I don't mind. I mean, I'm, no, seriously. If you ever want to do something like that, tell me and we'll just work with you on it. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk later. And yeah, then, yeah. You know, so no, and if I can work with somebody in L.A., I can refer a lot of work to you. Okay, cool. So. Well, I'm, I'm not from L.A. I'm part of the Inland Empire area. Okay. I live in High Desert. Yep. Victorville Square area. The beautiful area. But it's getting so popular. Where's that gold? I'm going to... It was a tiny bit of gold. Well, you Mexico? Oh, oh yeah, let me know. I mean, like I said, I've been in 28 countries doing this, so if you if you need me somewhere, I'll go. Where at? Where in Mexico? Okay.
What's that? Alex, that would be amazing. I probably need you out there, dude. So, what's the difference between a torch and alcohol for popping bubbles? A torch is a real quick, effective way to do it right away. Now, um, like the bubble that's on the surface will get popped. This here is going to settle on here, help level this even more, make it even smoother. It'll actually kind of make it kind of a soft look. It won't have really hard lines. And then any air that comes up will hit that alcohol pop self level. Gold and alcohol in? I am. I just want to. I want this to shimmer. If I'm doing free work, it's gonna shimmer. Somebody's gonna be like, "What the hell is that?" Look at the difference in height. You, we ran our level. Yeah, All right, guys. I guess we can clean up. Oh man, you know what? Mm. So the little bit that seeped right down there into the sink area is not going to be a problem. You're just going to cut it away with an end without. I guess I will have to. I haven't done the inspection like you have, so I didn't see that. Welcome to my world. Did you mean to do this this way, honey? Sorry. It was no. It was it was not a criticism. Oh, those drips. I'd just wipe them up right now. Two, three little tiny drips, it wouldn't be an issue. And that's why, like, somebody that stays behind right here, it can be so valuable to have somebody stay back and just get, catch any little drips, pull the tape, clean anything up now so you're not waiting until later. Yeah, how do you like that clear as a pour, guys? If we keep those buckets, if you guys, if you guys keep those buckets separate, Till tomorrow, all that epoxy will pull out and they'll be brand new again. Because those were second mix buckets, so those will all work again. So, all right, now. I don't want to torch this clear I poured down, obviously, with all the heat I just put. So, I'm just going to spray heavy alcohol on it. It'll pop air bubbles for us. And I don't want to, I want to have a, see how, how crazy 3D that left it? Because it's the clear. That's why I love. So that'll, that'll, that'll blend in the rest of yep, I love clears just for that. Man, I hope this gold isn't making it look yellow. Yeah, I know. I'm like, I see right here it looks yellow almost, but it's just the gold shimmer. All right. Just clear. I love pouring clear because sometimes then it pushes everything and you see the three dimensional, you see like how deep it is. Yeah. Yeah. This is countertop epoxy, so it's the best epoxy in the world. That's the only special thing about it. Then if you actually look it up, I know I say that, but it has better clarity, so the spectrum analysis on it is amazing, has flexibility, which gives it shock resistance, so it improves the bond strength compared to any epoxy, has none, none of the three known harmful carcinogenic evaporatives, so it really is, it has a really good short E rating, so if you compare this to anything in the market, it's incredible. Well, now that we're all high, do we have somebody, are you guys able to stay back and, or are you guys able to stay back and peel the tape here in like a little while? Yeah. Yeah. Like probably give it like two or three hours or something and then you'll, you'll catch drips or anything like that and you can clean it right up. Do you guys want just some alcohol to clean up? You can clean any, if any little drips, you can clean it with that and so rag. Yeah, take all the tape. Okay. Yeah, and you can take that. So. All right. Thank you guys so much. I, I'm sorry I didn't spend a lot of time with you guys. We're going to be going live again tomorrow, and I hope you guys had an awesome day. And thank you so much for following along on our actual little job. So thank you guys for letting us do this to your house. Um, we can go ahead and...